Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is Gap, the Great American Broadcast Network. Okay, everybody, how are you? I'm Alex Bennett, and this is The Ramble. We go until midnight Eastern time, two hours of fun and enjoyment. We start off the first half hour, usually either me blabbing or blabbing with somebody, and then uh, about uh, 25 minutes into the show, we then turn it over to the Citizens Panel, which is not one, but as many as up to, oh, eight, nine, ten other people all talking at the same time. Well, not at the same time, but in this, on the same line, okay? It's not just one of those talk shows where the talk show host talks to one person at a time. Anyway, um, got a guest tonight, and I think we should get to that right now. Okay, so we, we just like to call this person. As you know, we do this every time. We call our good friend Stephen Pearl because he, whenever he picks up, he picks up in some kind of weird way, and we like to catch that. So let's uh, let's let's see what happens here. There we go. Mm-hmm. And then that's the actual ring. Da, 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 da. Cousin Bruce, you got a Cousin Bruce show, 77, WABC. You know why you kids like using the term acid rock? I prefer the term progressive rock. On the Cousin Bruce show, 77, WABC. Here's the box tops. Hello. Hello. How are you, Steve? I just thought I'd throw in a little blast from the past there, the old time radio days. Wouldn't you believe it, but when I was at uh, Sirius XM, they hired Cousin Brucey. Uh, Wheel him out of the morgue. He's still around. Huh? He's still around, and uh, he has a uh, hairpiece that's older than he is. It's amazing. <laughs> oh my God! It's bigger than Steve Allen's. I hear. You know, he's in I, danger I, of his head being crushed. I got to tell you something about cousin Brucey. I mean, I, I know Brucey. He's a nice, nice enough guy. I can't. You know, he seems he, like a genial, jovial well, fellow. Well, you can't fault him, but if you're around him. All he ever does is talk about himself. Okay. <laughs> That's like being around the president. <laughs> uh, and I mean, I don't mean this in any disparaging way, except he just likes talking about himself, which I got to tell you. <laughs> he's had quite a colorful life. Why shouldn't he tell everyone about it? Well, you know, he's always been the second run guy in that he. Um, uh, there were other guys on other <laughs> stations, like uh, oh, I think Dan Ingram over at uh, WMCA, who yeah, were he was, bigger, he was the honcho, I guess. who were bigger and better known than he was, or Murray the K, yeah. who was bigger and better and known than he was. But he yeah. was a, a he was a self promoter, very heavy self promoter, yeah. and secondly, sure. he just outlasted them. He just managed to live and <laughs> and still broadcast yeah. Yeah. longer than any of them. So then he's known. He, do you know they have a street named after him in New York City? You know how they sometimes make an... Oh, uh, really? They take something like, I think it's like, oh, I don't know, it's like 53rd Avenue or something, uh, 53rd uh-huh. Street. And for a block, they made it Cousin Brucey Way. Oh, Lord. It's an avenue nobody's really using. They give it to Cousin Brucey. Yeah. So, so, I got my own block. I'm really close. You have your own block. I have my own block. So, so he was also kind of an also ran to all these other people who were far more <laughs> famous than he was, but he outlived them and he stayed yeah, on the air longer around. than they did. So now, of course, it's like, <laughs> oh, you know, Sirius goes, oh, we've, Cousin Brucey, we, we, we've got to get Cousin Brucey. Well, my question yeah. is, why? You know, but yeah, because he's a, because he lives. So now here's he the, here's the best part of cousin Brucey. Does anybody know who we're talking about? Because outside of oh, New York man. City, everyone our age is dead now. So nobody, well, wait a minute. If, if, you, if, if you're listening to this show and you're in Wisconsin, you're my friend Patrick Blazik. He probably doesn't know who cousin Brucey was. Because Cousin Brucey uh-huh. was no, literally a local Google star. Him. I don't think he ever went syndicated, nothing like that. Anyway. So that he comes to Sirius and they give him the studio to use, which other people use as well, right? The the, uh, the uh-huh. uh, uh, trucking channel used it. It was, <laughs> it was really the studio for the trucking channel. He comes in and uh-huh. his wife redecorates it, right? 
with all <laughs> this an early cousin Brucey. With all this cousin Brucey memorabilia, not the least of which is because we had uh, Florida ceiling windows in each of these studios. She put pictures of cousin Brucey in the window, <laughs> just you know, covering the windows like twenty or thirty, you know, big giant put on cardboard backing or styrofoam backing <laughs> pictures of Cousin Brucey throughout his career. And, and what you don't do is put up pictures of yourself where in one picture that's really old, you're losing your hair. Yeah, exactly. And then later on, as you're older, you have a full head of hair. You just don't do that, hey, you know? It worked for Carl Perkins. <laughs> yeah, it worked for Carl Oh, Lord, he's out <laughs> He's he sounds like Ted Baxter, my God. <laughs> and, and so here are all these pictures of Cousin Brucey, and there's there's one with him. He's young. He's with the Beatles. He's got hair. He's got hair, but it's receding, yeah. okay? And then there's yeah. another picture Receding of him hairline. later on, and he's got this, like, fucking pompadour, you know? Yeah. And I'm going, <laughs> with the old price tag, four ninety nine. dollars In other words, again, I say he's a nice guy. I don't want people to say yeah. Alex was dissing you. I'm actually kidding the persona that is Cousin Brucey. That's right. That's uh, right. Although, I, you know, as I say, he can't stop talking about himself. Uh, <laughs> he, uh, well, I got to meet it, him someday. Well, see, I can't say he's not a nice guy because the only times that I've had any interaction with him, he's been very nice to me. Okay? Yeah. He, may be a, he may be a prick to other people. I don't know. But to me, he was nice. <laughs> so I have to say he was nice. But... In the discussion that I had with him, which was at a party, all of it was about cousin Brucey and who he nah. met. You know, he. I am I am laughing that son of a bitch. I'm green. What a drug. Ooh. Yeah, uh, uh, you know, but there were other people that were more famous than he. And again, in New York City, which was like yeah. uh, uh, Murray the K, uh, who I knew yeah. because I worked sure. with him in his last job at WMCA. In fact. The fifth beetle. Well, now he's the third beetle in heaven, but that's another. Well, well here's you know, here's what happened. One night, I'm driving to work, going down the. Uh, the I always came down the uh, West Side Highway, and I'm coming down to work, and I turn on WMCA because it's it's Saturday night, and I had a Saturday night show that I did, which was replaced. Uh, um, um, <laughs> What's his name? Uh, my he was my mentor, and now I can't remember names. God, my I'm I just anyway. I, I was I, Marconi. I don't know. Taking a while. No, he, he, the guy did interview shows on WMCA. Uh, oh boy, uh, Barry, Gray, Barry, uh, Gray, uh, Barry Gray, Barry Gray, Steven. Barry Gray, Tech Barry Sanford. Gray, Barry Gray. I was like, I did the Barry Gray show on Saturday nights, and. Um, uh, and I was kind of his protege, so it's funny I didn't mention his name or remember his name. But then again, I took a Xanax last night, and it wipes out any kind of total recall. Oh, well, <laughs> well I, had, on, I, I, had, on the album. I had to go to sleep, okay, and I couldn't get to sleep last night. Anyway, so where were, where were we? Oh, yeah, Barry Gray. So I'm going down to do Barry Gray's show, and I turned on the radio just to see what's happening on WMCA. And it's just wall-to-wall -wall music. Now, in those days, a station like WMCA, there was no such thing as wall-to-wall -wall music. It was music, uh -huh. three commercials, another song, three commercials, another yeah, song, three commercials, another song. It's not like, we're going to play ten in a row. Well, it was just one song uh -huh. after another. And I, yeah. what, what the fuck is happening? Is this a new format? Uh -huh. What is it? And, it, it, and <laughs> it's supposed to be the Murray the K show, Okay. Because he worked like one day a week at that time, and it was at WMCA. So yeah. I uh, I pull up to the station, and there's an ambulance in front of the station. And as I walk in, they're wheeling uh, Murray the K out on a gurney. Uh, oh, no. Uh, he, he didn't have a heart attack or anything. Apparently, he took an upper when he should have taken a downer, and he went sideways. <laughs> I, I, you know. <laughs> Uh, he, no, taking was going a little fast. But they're hauling him out in an ambulance. And uh -huh. uh, I went up, and uh, they said, we've got to get somebody on the air. I said, well, I'll go in, and I'll finish your show for him. So I went on, and I finished his show. I was there the last night that Barry, uh, that uh, that uh, Murray the K was ever on in New York City. That was uh -huh. it. He was through. 
And um, uh, he went to, I think he went to Washington and worked at some station there. Uh, but that was his uh, last <laughs> night in New York City, and I replaced him. So I'm. Oh I, man, he got a lucky break because of his gas attack or whatever. He well, had. it wasn't a lucky break. I had a job anyway. I was just asked to jump in and, oh. do, and, and do this thing for him. And I went over and I did Bear, the, the Saturday Night Barry Gray Show, which was the Alex Bennett uh-huh. program on Saturday night. There you go. But I got to use Barry Gray's big studio with all the tables and the chairs, and the, I would bring uh-huh. a whole bunch of people. And we, it was the same format that Barry would use the rest of the week. But yeah. that that was my last memory of Murray the K. But I got to tell you, when I first walked into WMCA the first day that I was there, I mean, uh, they had a meeting of, of the staff. And I'm there with, like, some of the greats of New York City radio. I mean, there was Barry, yeah. uh, there was Barry Gray was there and uh, um, uh, Murray the K and other people people wouldn't know, like Dan Daniel, uh, who was, yep. in fact, Dan died recently, and I had met up with him again a few years ago at a party of a friend of mine. Uh, Dan Daniel was the first top 40 disc jockey. He was the first guy ever to do top 40. Uh, It was invented by uh, Todd Storrs and Gordon McClendon, and he was working for Todd Storrs, and they started the format there, and he was the first top 40 disc jockey. Wow. Uh, and uh, and uh, oh, Fra- and another guy who was very famous in New York. His name is Frankie Crocker. Was there? Ah, oh, of course, Frankie Crocker. Of course, uh, I Frankie uh, Crocker. Uh, and, and Frankie Crocker uh, and I and Dan Daniel had something in common. We all shared the same birthday. Oh, really? That's yeah. pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, I mean, diff- different years, but same birthday, December eighteenth. Yeah. So here, yeah, that's pretty cool. Oh, it's a- September 18th? Yeah, and there were um, some other guys there like Ed Bear. The day Bear. Jimi Hendrix died and the day my father put a bull in his head. It's a oh, memorable day, a memorable oh, day. Oh, did he die on December 18th? Huh? Oh, I thought you said September 18th. No, I'm December, sorry. 18th. December 18th. Okay, yep. rewind that, erase, erase. Yeah, two days after but, uh, Beethoven's no, birthday, okay. and I think the same, uh, same day as Steven Spielberg. Uh, oh, okay, not bad, not bad. Not bad. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but I wish they'd said to Steven Spielberg, oh, you know you have the same birthday as Alex Bennett, but I never got that popular. So, anyway, oh. um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, it, can be part of it, 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 now to people who are listening, you don't know who any of these people are, but to any kid growing up in New York City, cumulatively, these guys were known as the good guys. Oh, yeah. And, and that's my. Well, if it wasn't Frankie Crocker on WWRL, the the black station, which is all the way to the right, is like you know, woo, well, all no, the way. He he left he there. Turning the dial till it barely turns anymore. He went to WWRL. I think he got caught in a payola scandal or something. If I don't. Remember. Well, didn't everybody? <laughs> that was part of the part of the biz. Well, you know, there was no such thing as payola until somebody decided there was such a thing as payola. Uh, exactly. No, there people People for a long time have been, you know, taking money for playing records. What? There's no law against yeah. taking money for playing records. No. Nope. All right? No. Nope. So one day they, they decided to, to make a big though, deal but... out of it, and they came up with the charge of commercial bribery. That, that yeah. was a law. And so that was considered commercial bribery, and that's really what they got right. them on. But, you know, they were taking this money and going, everybody else is doing it, and I was just doing it like everybody yeah. else. Um, yeah, I didn't take payola. I did take pussyola on a couple of occasions. Because, no, the pussyolas are good. They well, can't get you on that. Well, no, no, when you when I was living in uh, Houston, Texas, and working at the radio station, every now and then a record promoter would come into town with a hooker, <laughs> which, and then everybody, all the jocks in town, would go over and fuck her. I'm not kidding you. <laughs> And hello, I think, son. Say hello to Cinnamon Tempest. She's uh, my cousin. Uh, uh, I think you'd like some time alone with her. Stormy Daniels. No, anyway, we... Uh, Stormy. <laughs> no, and a traveling rat. No, oh, did, she'll I, give you something I, to remember about, boy. To be decent and nice, I only did that once. And I didn't like <laughs> it, so I didn't do it. But I got offered things like one guy I offered me a refrigerator if I wanted it. <laughs> or uh, do you want a new suit? <laughs> I take what I take a refrigerator. And I, at that point, outside of that one time of engaging in pussyola, uh, I decided pussy-ola. that I did not want to, in any way, <laughs> take money or goods or pussy for any yeah. for playing any record. I said, if your record's good, 
I'll play it. And the thing was that when I was offered the, the suit and everything, or the refrigerator, it was for a song I had already been playing because I liked it. And I said, no, I don't want it. I played your song because it's good, you know. But the thing was, well, it's got an ice maker. But prior to the payola thing, th there was no crime in that. There was no law. Everybody considered it was okay. Yep. And my question is, why shouldn't a radio station be paid money for playing records? Because when they play the record, yeah. what happens to the record? It sells. The record, yeah, exactly. And so why do you buy commercials? So that you have toothpaste, and when you put a commercial on the air, it sells, and you pay for that commercial. Exactly. I think what the mm -hmm. crime was is that any radio station or any disc jockey could, in fact, take money for playing records if he announced that on the air, that he was taking money, oh. he was taking a fee for playing certain records on his program. Wow, did anybody really do that? Hi, here's a new record, which I'm no. getting a piece of. But I, th right. I, I think record companies should have to pay for records being played. It, sure. it, you know, yeah. because if they don't get played, you don't sell records. So, yep. you know. Uh, but uh, but anyway, so it, but the statutes of limitations have run out on by pussy Ola. It was like, you know. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, oh, that's long in the past. 20, 25 at the time or something like that. But that was the uh, only time I yeah. ever did it. I never, I was offered it when I was in New York City. I never took it. I said, don't uh, ever, don't ever ask me if I want money for playing a record. <laughs> I'll, I'll give you one pass no on it. Pussy. I'm honest. Ask me again. No, I, I said, ask me again, and I'll go to the cops on it because I just oh. did. I didn't want to be tempted, you know. Yeah. And uh, but so like a guy like uh, Frankie Crocker, I think finally got caught on it, and he was program director of the station. Uh -huh. And uh, I think that was pretty much the end of his career. He had a short time on NBC TV doing Saturday Night Special or something like that as the host. Uh -huh. Uh, but a, a great guy. I love Frankie. Uh, I, went, I used to I go on. I, I, I used to go on. I think every night after him, and uh, Dan, yeah. you know all these guys. I, just, I work with some of the greats when I went to New York for the first time. And uh, yeah. but I didn't know how great they were because I was from San Francisco and I didn't know these guys. You know, I'd heard of Murray yeah. McKay, but that was about it. But then I come into town. Yeah. Everybody goes, "Oh, uh, he, he had left the station before, just before I went to work for them." But they had a guy there called Dan Ingram, who was what? huge, just huge. Now, people listening to me are going, Dan Ingram? I never heard of Dan Ingram. Well, you never heard of, never heard of any of these guys because there wasn't syndication in those days. And usually they, yeah. they were just the king of their market. If you went outside their area code, nobody knew who the fuck they were. Sure. Dan Ingram did a lot of voiceovers for commercials in the 70s and 80s. Uh, Hawa Hawa not, Hawaiian the, Punch. I heard his voice on like every other commercial. He was yeah. all over the joint. Hawaiian Punch. You know, you would go for yep. you go for <laughs> you go for a voiceover audition. If you saw Dan Ingram was there, you just turned around and walked out. Yeah, you turned around and yeah. went home. <laughs> yeah, there was a kid named Kevin West who was like every commercial in the 90s oh, in L.A. If you went to an audition, you saw his name on the top. I'm going home. See you later. Did you have any, uh, now you were, what What uh, borough were you born in, Brooklyn? No. I was born in Far Rockaway in uh, St. Joseph's Hospital, which is now St. John's Hospital, and raised there uh, across the Nassau County and Hewlett there. Good fellas. Oh, course. I see. Okay. So so you listen to New York radio. Who was your favorite? Oh, sure. Who was your favorite disc jockey? Well, in the early days, I started listening to radio in 67, 68, so I, I started with, like, WABC, and I started with that WMCA. Yeah. And then later on, about a year or so later, I discovered FM, and I didn't know about you when you were on MCA, but I discovered you on FM when you were on, that was it, WPLJ, then WABC right. FM. Right. And I liked you a lot, because I never really heard good call in radio. I thought that was pretty cool. And I liked, uh, I liked Scott Beauty. Because I have a voice like that, yeah, making the radio is a fucking miracle. I gargle with glass and Brillo pads. You know what? You know what his problem was? He had throat polyps, and but that gave him Ooh, a, lots that, of them. That gave him a distinctive voice. So he you never think a voice like that could have made on now, radio. So now, usually, I, my hat is off to him. If, if, if you have those polyps, you usually get rid of them. Um, 
And, yeah. and he, he would get rid of some of them, but he wouldn't get rid of all of them because he wanted to keep a certain amount of <laughs> He'd have them. So that voice, the that voice, has Scott Minnie. to move them and put them in my throat. And he did a lot of commercials <laughs> with that voice. I yeah, kept, oh, yeah, crushed toothpaste, using her own fucking carrier. Oh, man, I, I, kept try, I kept trying to misuse my voice so I could get voiceovers and yeah. get polyps, <laughs> you know. Uh, but unfortunately, oh, I'm that ne- was a miracle that he made it on radio because with that voice was just horrendous. <laughs> I, I, I it, never, was, it was like endearing in a way. You were like a car accident. You had to look. You had to listen. I never got throat polyps because I was trained how to use my voice. And that was yeah. to speak from the diaphragm, not to speak from your throat. <clears throat> okay. Most people speak from the throat. They, <laughs> they, they, they're higher yeah. up here. They're talking like from the throat. Yeah. I talk from my diaphragm. And, and the way they taught me is they said, feel your chest. And when you're talking right, you can feel your chest vibrate. Okay. So uh, I always ooh. talked from my chest, and I never got polyps. On the other hand, I'll tell you a guy I never talked, uh, and this is a guy our audience would know who, who, who had polyps and uh, never spoke that way. And I tried to teach him how to do it, but he never, never did it. It was Bobby Slayton. Slayton oh, had yeah. Had poly- he, he got a rough old voice. He had to have polyps removed a few years ago. Uh, wow, and that's yeah. that's why he always sounds like this. Hey, Bennett. Hey, 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 hey. hey. <laughs> How you doing? How you doing? <laughs> yeah. So, so, what did you learn about today, folks? You learned about disc jockeys you never heard of and throat polyps. Yeah. There um, you go, throat polyps and tri-state radio heroes from uh, way back when. So, but so you weren't into like cousin Brucey, were you? I listened to him on WABC at night. He came with Cousin Bruce, hey, Cousin Bruce, hey, Cousin Bruce. Hey, everybody, Cousin Bruce, we're not ready to go to the box talk. So, you know, I listened to him. I liked him. I thought he was cool. I, I thought he looked like a gargoyle with the way he spoke. And then I saw a picture of, hey, he's not a bad looking guy. He just doesn't look like a gargoyle on a building. So yeah. I tried to picture what the fun was trying to picture what they all looked like. And then you get the little sheet with the top 10 on it with all the pictures of this guy. Hey, he I thought this guy had antennas. What the fuck? I thought this guy was a cyclops. You, uh, they didn't look anything like they sound. Yeah, but, I, I, uh, I, I, I liked everybody. I liked everybody. I think he's still at uh, at Sirius on some level. I don't know. I, I don't listen to Sirius. God anymore. bless him. I hope his second hundred and twenty seven years in the business are as good as the first. I'm God, he's got to be in. His, he's got to be in his eighties, easily. Well, more yeah. power to him because he's old. He, he, he was old. the way he does. He doesn't have an old man's voice. You know, he's like, like you, got, you sound the same as he did forty five years ago. Really? And if he still sounds the same as he did then, God bless him, he's young at heart, and so are his vocal cords. Yeah. Um, you know, and he's doing the same act. You know, it's like it of hasn't course. changed. What else are you going to do? I mean, my act has changed a little, I think, you know. But it doesn't, doesn't matter. This <laughs> doesn't isn't a radio program. What's the difference? All my friends are dead. This is play radio we do here, you know. This is just mm-hmm. kidding yeah. around. Uh, and hoping that somebody will listen. Uh, <laughs> somebody, please. This is long. Uh, every, every guy, listen. every guy who loses his job in radio goes. You know, what I'm going to do now. I'm going to go do a podcast. Oh yeah, sure, fine, <laughs> fine. Uh, kind of like when uh, what was it? Uh, once uh, Walter Winchell was finished, and he wasn't writing for the papers anymore. He used to mimeograph his uh, column and hand it out at the store club when people were coming out. Oh really? Here you go. Hey, reading it. I'm still big. Leave me alone. Really, I didn't know that. Yeah, he, he yeah, that's what I, I read that somewhere. That he, I'm not finished. Now I'll be f- back. He's like f- Johnny f- Friendly at the uh, end of uh, on the uh, Water. He, for here's what we go. We he go wouldn't the, give up. <laughs> we go in this never-ending wheel of trying to tell people who somebody is, and no matter how much you say it, you lose them again. <laughs> like for instance, I could say yeah. Walter Winchell. You may not have known about him on radio, where he was huge. Mm-hmm. Okay, he used to do the Walter Winchell reports. Oh, Mr. and Mrs. America, and all the ships at sea, yeah. let's go to press. That's how he opened up every day. Uh, he was huge. He was a Cronkite of his day. He was a bastard. Yeah, uh, but, but what happened was is uh, uh, I could tell people, well, maybe you didn't know him from that because you didn't know radio then. He was the narrator on The Untouchables. There you go. Okay, if but you then, the then, then, you then we get the second question from younger people. What was The Untouchables? <laughs> oh, you can't <laughs> what, win with these punks. Wasn't that the movie with Sean Damn, Connery no and Kevin Costner? You know, I mean, uh, so, <laughs> so there's. Uh, I, I do think he may have acted. Did he narrate <laughs> the movie? I'm trying to remember. That's a good question. Sean Connery? Yeah, no, uh, uh, Walter Winchell. I think he was dead. Uh, Walter Winchell. 
He was a. I've been dead since 1972. And forgot he, he was a that. son of a bitch. He would he would like uh, vilify people in his column and just ru- try to ruin oh, yeah. them by calling them communists. Oh, by calling them communists. Yeah. And you know who he called yeah. a communist constantly? Barry Gray, the guy well, who was my <laughs> I was the protege of, and I did his Saturday night show. He called him son of a bitch. He, in his column. The name he had for him was Barry Red. Oh, what a dick! <laughs> yeah, and um, I heard he called Lenny Bruce America's number one vomit. So what? 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 Barry Gray would do much to his credit was anytime anybody was um, blacklisted, right? Where they would take an actor or a comic or whatever and blacklist them so they couldn't work anymore. He would have really? the person who was blacklisted immediately on his show to explain why he wasn't a communist or why he shouldn't be on the blacklist. <laughs> so, oh, you know, and then Winchell had Barry Gray beaten up by gangsters. Really? Holy shit. What yeah, I mean, did, right? yeah, it was really, it was brutal. It was brutal. So that's why. Wow. Yeah, it, was a, it was a simpler time. It's by the fact that Barry threw me to the wolves when I got fired at WMCA. I still have the greatest respect for the guy. Hey, look, we've run out of time. We've run out of precious time. Wow, that was a fun lesson in old-timey radio there. I enjoyed that. That's 25 minutes towards the end of my life. You know. (laughs) We'll never get that time back again. When do we do the next one? Let's do this one in a couple of weeks, okay? I'm with you. I'm there, Daddy. I'll, I'll be there in Technicolor for you. Ladies and gentlemen, the, love, color. the lovely and attractive, and I love to talk to him, Stephen Pearl. Bye, thank Steve. You. Thank you. Likewise, my friend. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. And that was Stephen Pearl. I love Stephen. Hey, he's terrific. Uh, and it, uh, because it's pre-recorded, it gives me time to go to the bathroom. So anyway, Hey, by the way, uh, 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 Damien wrote me a note and I don't know what, it might've been reference to something in the interview. Uh, he says, uh, oh yeah, you were talking about payola. Oh yeah. 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 All these years and you're still my role model. He said, <laughs> I'm doing everything I can to stop being your role model. Uh, just to to just uh, uh, say things about my life and times that will disappoint you, but I guess nothing will, Damien. So you're you're a true acolyte, as it were. I don't know whatever that means, but uh, it's a pleasure working with you. Let me put it that way. Okay. All right. So anyway, let me turn on the uh, let me turn on the uh, the uh, the uh, the uh, Skype uh, thing here. Yeah. If you don't know how to use Skype, by the way, and you want to call the show, just go over to gabnet.net and you can read all on the left hand side of the page. There's a whole tutorial on how to how to get uh, uh, Skype and how to call us using it. It's very simple. It's very easy. There's also a phone number there if you don't want to use Skype. And you just want to give us a call. Uh, you're more than welcome to do it. OK, uh, I'm not really in the center of the picture here. Let me see here. Can I? I guess I can't change that. Okay. Anyway, here I am talking to you. And uh, where are we? So uh, I have the lines open in case anybody wants to call. Who knows? I always always have the great fear that one night nobody's going to call at all. All right. Haven't heard from uh, Rob in a while. It's been about over a week. So I hope you're okay, Rob, if you're listening to us. Um, what else? Uh, that's about it. Mm. I have nothing of any uh, great importance to talk about. Uh, nothing much happened today. Oh, you know, interesting stuff that you wouldn't care about. Like the fact that I now have my uh, drugs at the, per, the, at, the, uh, at the drugstore for my new prescription system in which I have to buy three months at a time. So, you know, uh, I think of it as, oh boy, I got to put out all this money all at once, but you know, I've got it to put out, and then it's just not any more than it was every month anyway, so eh, it's going to be okay. But it's a whole new system because to, starting tomorrow, I am now on the uh, SAG-AFTRA medical plan for my, uh, for my secondary, uh, 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 what do you call it, secondary medical 
thing. And my wife's on it, too, and uh, uh, it's the one great thing my union has given me and my old doddering, my dotage, I think is the term that's used, dotage. Uh, but anyway, so uh, let's, uh, everybody, give us a call. And, and Rob, I'm worried about you. I always, I always get worried about people who are regulars to the program who then don't call for like a week. And I mean, they may have a problem or something or something's going on in their lives or whatever. But I kind of, you know, it's strange. I was thinking about it today. This is really sick. I have no family. I mean, outside of girlfriend. She's my family, right? But I think my, uh, I do kind of have a family here at GabNet. I mean, these people who call every night and that I talk to every night and that I have an ongoing relationship with kind of have become my family of sorts. And uh, I don't know if, if uh, uh, you know, that bothers you <laughs> if you're a regular, but I just wanted you to know. So uh, I'm I'm happy to say that you're you're my my peeps. Okay. Oh, hey, here he comes. Ah, yes. Now you see, I speak and and he and he he arrives, ladies and gentlemen. There's Rob Alfano. I was getting a little worried about you, Rob. How are you? Yeah, but I figured maybe you were up to your ass in work or something like that. Uh, well, last Friday night, my neighbors couple of uh, had a f couple of forty-year-old birthday parties. We had a big party. Yeah, I I DJed all the eight music East party. Did that. Yeah, and uh, just being exhausted by the by ten thirty at night. Yeah, for some reason your your sound is going in and out, and it doesn't look like it's Skype that's doing it. Uh, okay. Yeah, I hear me coming back at me. Yeah, yeah. Am I? Uh, am I? Um, you're fine. No, you're fine. You're fine. Right. You're fine. Your, your audio is just uh, just fine. Uh, Rob, like fall back uh, if it's still doing. How's that? Is it better now? I think I don't hear it anymore. It's like a reverberation on it. it. It's kind of like on? um. How can I do? That? I, I can't even describe it. It's uh. It's kind of like you go into a uh, into a hole for a second or something. T Let me hang up and call back. Okay, you know the, it, it, Skype is very weird. Yes, he's going to give us a call back. Hello, Phil. Hey, Phil Meyer says hi. Hey, Phil Meyer Why says not? hi. It is a Phil full night tonight. Yeah, yeah, you're full of Phil. Full, full <laughs> of Phil. Full of Phil. Let's hear you now. Let's see, Rob. How's that sound? It's Same just thing. A, there's a kind of like, I don't know. What I don't know. Oops. Oops. Now I'm, I'm hearing. Sure. Now I'm hearing. Uh, let me let me do something here. Let me kill this, the audio a second. Now let me bring it back up. Okay. Now I'm not having that slap back. Yes, you are. No, I'm not. Oh, I'm hearing a little bit of it. A little bit of it. Yeah. Yeah. There. Uh, I'm, I'm just. It, it, there's something. something. You want to re uh, reboot your Skype? No, there's, I don't think there's anything wrong with my Skype. To be honest right. with you, it's fine now. Um, you what? I mean, I I don't have any problem with the Skype. Right. You because you're coming through fine. Talk to me now, Rob. Hello, can you hear me okay now? Yes, it's getting better. Uh, lower your modulation a little bit. Lower your mic a bit. You're over. Uh, huh? How's that? No, you know something. Uh, when you lowered it, we get the sound like there's another microphone on on the other in uh, across the room or something. Mm -hmm. uh, that headset you're wearing, does that have a mic on it? No. 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 I wonder if you are going through your regular mic. Okay. Yeah, he is. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Talk to us now. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can yeah, hear no. you. That's fine. Well, we'll live with it, whatever it is. Who knows? I haven't touched anything here. I I, I know. It's just... Uh, out any, I can't figure out how to how to feed any audio through the through Skype anymore. I don't know what the hell happened, but. Uh, well, you go into Skype and you just simply say or built in whatever is, yeah. is going to be your mic or whatever. Anyway, you sound yeah. okay. You sound all right now. Um, I heard you last night talking about, um, I wanted to, to talk about this because I heard you talking about uh, writing a letter to Roku. Yeah. So I did that. And did I, had, I did that on Saturday. After I read about all of the the like Delta Airlines and all that. I figured, you know what? I wrote to Amazon. Yeah. 
tried to write to Apple, but I couldn't find a place to do well, it. Let's t let me tell people what, what you're talking about, because they may not have heard last night's show, and they don't know what we're talking about. It seems as though on Apple TV, on Roku, I believe on Amazon devices like their, their stick, their Amazon stick that picks up all the channels and stuff, they carry, hello, um, uh, Tony, they carry the NRA channel. Yeah. And I mentioned that I was thinking about writing them uh, like Roku and saying, you know, how dare you, or Apple TV and saying, how dare you. And then I kind of had a second thought about it because I go, well, I'm on there. You know, I'm on Roku. I, we have a Roku channel, and I have the right to do that. So can I really complain that they don't discriminate because of political standing or whatever, you know? Um are the shows you've watched? Plus, this you NRA can either channel. subscribe or not subscribe to those channels. Yeah, I, too. I, I've never watched this NRA channel, but you have. And can, are these shows uh, uh, shows that would cause people to go out, uh, take a Xanax the night before, and then that's, go looking for a school? So that's not the point. That's not the point. That's not the point. They, they are very. I got a letter back from. from said, wait, wait, you, I, I sent them a letter and you, I told them that I. You know, I'm I'm going to think with my dollars. Yeah. I'm about to buy another device for another TV, and I'm glad I haven't made that decision yet, mm -hmm. because I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to just the way American Air or Delta Airlines and everybody is coming around to put some pressure on the NRA. This is not uh, about content. This is about the, the time is right. Think this is the time to put pressure on them to do something to be. No, this is the time to do something. This is not about content. I don't care about yeah. their content. But why do you think Dick's Sporting Goods today announced? Yeah, I didn't even know they were selling them. What? Yeah, I thought my sneaker goods is taking them off the market. You didn't know uh, that Dick's Sporting Goods wouldn't be selling guns? Are you out yeah, of your I mind, Tony? I bought my sneakers and won the ball. So I raised the H. <laughs> what? Well, Walmart raised the age to buy yeah. guns. Yeah, that was the yeah. They followed Dick Sporting Goods uh, lead today. They announced first Dick's, that Walmart yeah. came out after. But they it. didn't they didn't go as far as Dick Sporting Goods because uh, Dick they didn't say they weren't going to carry uh, assault rifles. No, no, they took them off the shelves too. Uh, Walgreens to okay. tonight. Yeah. All right. So anyway, I got this letter back from Roku. It was really well thought out, and it wasn't just like a form letter or a thank you for your your reply kind of thing. They actually answered me, and uh, I took the time again to thank them for their thoughtful letter. Yeah. And I really appreciated the fact that somebody took the time to write me. You can tell it was written to me and not a form letter. What, what did it say, what, in I, essence? Do you have it there at all? Yeah, I got it here on my phone. Oh, oh, oh so they sent it to you by email. Yeah. yeah. So it says here, I thank you for your thoughtful... Uh, no, wait a minute. That's my response back to them. Mm -hmm. um, where is their message? Here it is. This is from Roku now. Hello. Mm -hmm. Thank you for contacting us. I want to reply to you after receiving your recent message about the content on our Roku platform. My coworkers and I share deep sadness about the recent tragedy that occurred in Florida. Our streaming platform allows our customers to choose from thousands of entertainment, news, and special interest channels representing a wide range of topics and viewpoints. Customers can choose and control which channels they download or watch, and parents can pin uh, set a pin to prevent channels from being downloaded while the vast majority of all streaming on our platform is mainstream entertainment voices on all sides of an issue or cause are free to operate a channel we do not curate or censor based on a viewpoint we are not promoting or being paid to distribute NRA TV. We do not and have not ever had a commercial relationship with the NRA. Their channel is free to consumers with no ads. We welcome moms. De we welcome moms demand action and other important groups to our to use our platform to share uh, their messages too. While open to many voices, we have policies that prohibit the publication of content that is unlawful, incites illegal activities, or violates third-party rights, among other things. If we determine a channel violates these policies, it will be removed. To our knowledge, NRATV is not currently in violation of these 
content policies. I hope you better understand our position. We, we too, want to see an end to the tragedies. I appreciate hearing from you. That's actually, it's a, it's a form letter, but it's a nice form letter. So, well, I, my response to them was, I appreciate the letter back. However, this is not about, I'm not, uh, it's not about censorship. It's about putting pressure on the NRA to see, and I'm not talking about, you know, Second Amendment rights, but responsible, like 21 years old, to buy an assault rifle, um, background, full background checks. It's about getting those things done and getting the NRI to see that there are enough people out there. And, I, and basically, I said, you have this platform. And by you just having this platform and giving them platform to, to, to speak their speak, you can't just put your head in the but, sand but and it, say you're not responsible. They, they kind of replied to you by what I had said to you previously tonight. And that was that my, my second thoughts were, well, you know, they let me have my channel. Plus, you don't have to subscribe to the NRA channel. You don't have to ever see yeah, it. It, it but, Unless you put it on your Roku as, a, as an icon, you, you're not going to have access to it. But, but they, can, they could be, and I told them this, you, you know, I am looking at who is supporting responsible gun rights. Who? What companies are supporting this? Dick Sport. I mentioned Dick Sporting Goods tonight. I said Dick Sporting Goods came out today. I said these companies don't have to do this either. Yeah. This is not about content. This is about standing up for something. So, Rob, you don't like the Second Amendment, and you don't like the First Amendment now. I don't say I didn't like the Second Amendment. I'm not looking to take guns off shelves. I'm talking about doing I, something I, I, to I, stop okay. this L kind of let carnage. Me, let me give you a better idea here. Uh, I can tell how many people subscribe to my channel on Roku. There's something like 4,000 of them. Wow. Mis misguided human beings, but there are about 4,000 of them. Uh, and so really doubled and, and I think uh, three of them watch it, but there it's on, on the Rokus across the country. Uh, and um, so I know how many people are subscribed to my channel. So does the NRA. If they see that by Rob's use and, and lack of use and you know, everybody's lack of use of going onto that channel, their numbers start to go down, that's going to say something to them. I don't think that I, I would go along with, um, I would not write Roku and say, uh, take them off. Uh, I would just say how displeased you are that they're there. I think that's a valid point. But... You know, right now, you're talking, later on this show, is going to be broadcast on my Roku channel. In fact, it's being broadcast live. The audio is being broadcast live on Roku right now. And, and if you go over to your YouTube uh, icon or whatever and, and check in with that, you can watch this on, on your Roku or on your Apple TV or on your Amazon Fire Stick. So because of that, I can't bring myself to say they don't have the right to be on or that they shouldn't be on that platform. Uh, I think that we have the right not to subscribe to it. You get what I'm saying? Again, again I, I, where, where I'm taking it is I'm not saying they don't have a right to be on. Yeah. Right. What I'm saying is well, what, were you, what were you at? around the world yeah. are making <clears throat> statements well, what, in other words, what would you want Roku to do to satisfy you? So you'll put Roku on another TV set. Although tell, you're, not gonna, you're, not gonna put, you're not going to put you're not going to put an Apple TV on another set. You're not going to put an Apple Fire Stick. And I think uh, Google has one of those sticks too, and it probably has the NRA channel. So really, you're they gonna, do. They all have it. And in fact, I got to hand it to. I couldn't get Apple because I couldn't find a place to send an email to that made any sense. Yeah. Uh, but they do have a phone number if you want to call them and talk to them. I just didn't do it. But I wrote Amazon and got nothing back. Yeah. Um, and so I credit Roku for actually, you know, responding to me in a thoughtful way. Now, what what I'm saying is to do what these other, you know, the, why did Delta Airlines decide to? Why did all these companies decide that they're no longer going to offer those discounts? Well, in their particular in case, in, in their particular case, they were doing a form of business with NRA members. In other words, yeah, they were giving a discount if you rented their cars. 
all right? So uh, they, they were giving a certain kind of financial relief to people that they felt were a problem. And so they have done away with that. I, I think the, the two can, one cannot be compared to the other. You know what I'm saying? In other so words, in other words like if, if, if because the NRA channel were on, Roku decide to give a discount to every NRA member to buy a Roku, then I think we would have a reason to complain on the same level. Okay. Does yeah, that make sense? I, 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 yeah, it does. I mean, I get your point, but I still think that the more companies that apply pressure, yeah. the better. Yes. Right? Uh, Kevin, who sent me, by the way, the... Dick's Sporting Goods thing, which I was going to read, but Damien beat me to it tonight, so I'm not going to sit here and read it on mm. the air. But it's a very, it's a very well written piece of uh, of work about why they're not going to be carrying assault rifles any longer, and why they're not going to be selling to anyone under 21, and uh, why they're not going to. They never said they never ever sold bump stocks, so there's no reason for them to cut that out. Uh, but they're at least. They're taking some responsibility and even admitting in the letter, in the, the thing that they wrote, that, uh, uh, you know, the kid did buy a gun, yeah. a shotgun, shotgun, from a Dick's Sporting's Goods store. But he didn't use it in this particular crime, but he could have. And that's mm -hmm. what also bothered them. Yes, Kevin. Yeah, and, and uh, they they interviewed the, the CEO of Dick's Sporting Goods, and they, you know, the whole thing was that the guy had compassion and he took that compassion and put, you know, his, his gut to the whole thing and said, you know, I'm not going to wait for the legislation to do this stuff. I'm going to go ahead and do it myself. Yeah. And if they want to come ahead and follow it, I'm going to at least start the ball rolling and it's going to cost me money, but I don't care. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to, you know, make the 21, whatever, I'm not going to sell the assault weapons. I'm going to go ahead and do this shit now. And whatever you guys do later on, go ahead and, you know, follow me. Do you he, think he took the first steps? Do you think there's uh, some element here that, that, that maybe in the end they're going to do better because of it? Because a lot of people are going to think kindly of dicks. Like, I'll, I'll I never what, have, I've never been. I was been looking at the posts, you know, and it was, this is just plain old yeah. Facebook and whatnot. But all I could see was nothing but good. And it yeah. was up into the thousands and thousands and thousands i could see no bad and you know there was always the trolls that were in there talking shit but you know but there was more good than bad because most americans are for sensible laws around guns nobody wants right. to see them taken away i do right well <laughs> i do you fuck see uh, fuck Trump today saying uh, bucking heads with the nra and saying that he wants yeah. Yeah, uh, I actually thought that was halfway decent. What did he actually say he wanted? Did he put out anything, or did? Uh, and he also got on the Senate, uh, uh, or uh, was he the Congress or Senate about not doing anything? And he says, "What are you afraid of the NRA?" Yeah, yeah he, they had a, they had a halfway decent talk around around the table, and and he was bumping heads with the Republicans. He was bumping heads. He was praising the Democrats. You know, I actually so bad, I caught huh? part of it. Wait a minute. Let me. Let me. Actually, yeah. halfway. He called Diane. Diane. Well, <laughs> let me. Let me. Know? Let me ask you this: Is there a possibility that Trump has had a little talk with Wayne Lapierre and said, uh, yeah. "I, I'm, I, I can't be on the wrong side of history on this, so I'm going to say a certain amount of things." Uh, that he maybe did this with LaPierre's blessing. Could be. I, you I know, I, I, you I'm know I don't trust him enough to not say, I think he has. You know? <laughs> yeah. I don't trust him enough. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He but, calls for the cameras, and then in the end, you know. I don't can... know. I don't know. You know, he, uh, for him to come out, you know, say, hey, what, are you afraid of these guys? And, He's and, a businessman. And, and from the cheap. beginning. And from the beginning, he said, uh, you know, hey, I like these guys, but uh, we may have to bump a little head. Scott Boddicker, oh, who isn't calling the show right now, uh, writes, Trump wouldn't remember what he said today, tomorrow. Right. And they were neither, calling him. Neither would any of us. The, the, uh, the, the co Congress is saying, well, who did we get today, Tuesday or Thursday, uh, Trump? Exactly. Because, you know, I, I, hearkening back to what he did with, uh, with the immigration stuff, where he was all about this bill of love. And they go and they put a bipartisan bill together, and he just says no because the last person he told them 
he talked to said no. Yeah. So they're they're taking him with a grain of salt. Right. Now he also he also uh, they wanted to put some sort of concealed weapon uh, thing mm-hmm. where they could take it across states based on this uh, uh, age thing and the other stuff. And he said no, don't don't add that to the bill. He said let just get it's a separate piece of legislation. Yeah, he kind of went out of with Scalise on that one. Scalise, uh, Scalise was talking about. Oh yeah, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Scalise and, got and he kind of told him, "Don't, don't mess with that. You know, don't screw with that." Oh, you know, I, I agree. I every time he went at it with somebody like that, I kind of said, "Wow, look at him. He's actually being decent." But then I stepped back and said, "Wait a minute, this is Trump talking." Well, you know, it, just, well wait a minute, minute. You know, you know, I, I want to believe yeah. him, but I can't. A lot yeah, of these yeah, people. This is the say, first time you're seeing the real Trump. No, but the, we've heard this. We've heard you say that before. Yeah, you know, yeah, I, is, I want to, but I can't. Okay, wait yeah. a minute. Jeff, Jeff wants to say something. This is Trump Tuesday, right? Yeah. No, this Let's is. Ask, excuse uh, me, it's Trump, Trump Wednesday. Wednesday. Trump <laughs> Wednesday. <laughs> it was Trump, <laughs> Trump <Yeah>. Wednesday. <laughs> That's the reality. Unfortunately, he's got a long way to go. <laughs> yeah. Well, in your mind, I'm I'm kind of happy with what he's doing. Uh, I will tell you that um, I got an email today from work, and the email said because of the tax breaks, we're going to do a couple of things for you. They're giving us two more vacation days, and they're adjusting up the uh, match for the 401k. Those sons of bitches, how could they do that to you? (laughs) They're lying. (laughs) (laughs) That, That Trump... You know, he's getting you more vacation days. Son of a bitch. Yeah, but what's what is it going to cost us? So I'll get a couple of more vacation days and some more money in my 401k. But 10 years down the road, what are they going to take away from us to pay for all of it? They're going to take away my, my Social Security or my... or my. They're going to uh, go after your Social Security and they're going to yeah. go after your Medicare. That's the only places gotta, they can f- see getting money. Uh, right. they, fingernails. They want your fingernails. You know. They just, <laughs> well, I'll tell you something. Uh, number one, your Social Security you paid into, so you're owed it. All right. You think? And and, and your bo- your bosses did as well. Uh, the government never paid into it. All right. Right. That's that's for starters. Uh, with med- with Medicare, group? with Medicare, uh, the only thing wrong with Medicare is it only takes care of eighty percent of your medical costs. It should take care of a hundred percent. Uh, if we hadn't been robbing from Social Security all these years, we might be able to take care of 100%, but we don't. Um, I, I take a base salary because you have to as, uh, you know, if you don't, uh, as a corporation, you know, you got to show that you're, you're being paid a reasonable base salary. And my net pay uh, went up, uh, and it, it probably went up about, Twelve, thirteen hundred dollars a year, maybe a little more. Oh, that's a lot of money every year. Well, I hey, spend it on the one better, place. Yes. Yeah. yeah, and and if in the end you you don't have Medicare when you get older, and you're getting to that age, uh, you know, hey, you you paid for it, you know. Well, my girlfriend just got a job where they're giving her medical, so I'm covered under hers. Uh, how are you? You're not uh, you're not married. Mary. Uh, because we're in California, we've been together over 10 years, and uh, we're, um, what, what do they call that, uh, domestic partners. Shacked domestic up partner. is what we used to call it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, now I'm not going to do anything. Uh, I, it, it's not Kaiser. She has, uh, I don't know that I'm going to take it uh, because, you know, I have Kaiser and I'm going through some stuff right now. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, but, uh, you know, I might be yeah. able yeah, but it, yeah. you know, we're, we're, we're you know, well, all I'm saying is, is, and that's that's nice, and you probably feel good about it, but uh, you know, not everybody is work. I didn't get the bonus because I'm not working. You know, yeah, how come I, we didn't get a well, bonus, Alex? What's the deal? Because yeah. we're not you know, working. You get, you're, you're, are you, you working, taxed, Kevin? When, we didn't get a raise on our tax on not, our Social Security. Yeah. Yeah. Alex, you get taxed on Social Security, right? I get. I well, let me see here. Do, yeah, well. We file as a family, and so therefore my money adds into the total amount. Uh, so be, I would so still, I would still be paying for my social security. What am I getting per month? Eh, I don't know. But then I have my my after a pension, which is not a lot of money every month. Uh, you know, 
It's under well, under a uh, thousand uh, bucks a month. So I am at a point where I still would be paying taxes. Yes. I, uh, you know, I'm okay. taking uh, more than the maximum Social Security plus pro uh, your after pension. You said was about a thousand. So I'm taking uh, considerably more than that as a salary. Uh, and I'm seeing a, uh, a, a lessening of taxes. So probably, I don't know how much your wife makes, probably a lot more than me, but uh, the, you know, she may put you over a certain... You can file separately, can't you? Well, we can file separately, but I don't think that we've found that that is... Uh, we've, <clears throat> you know, my business manager weighs both of them and says, which one am I going to... We're going to be better with. And it's we've decided that... You know, she would get thumped a lot harder if we weren't filing as a as a family. Well, I want to make sure you get all the money that you got uh, coming to you because I'm going to be a creditor uh, of your uh, uh, for a while. <laughs> for a while. <laughs> You're buying one of my computers, but yeah, I'm, I'm giving you the money all at once. It's hey, not like sure it's not like it's not like you're going to be sending yes, me a bill money. every month. Okay. <laughs> I'm a creditor. I, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna owe him three hundred bucks because I'm getting his mini Mac, and um, mm. uh, and and, and uh, uh, he said I can. I said, how am I gonna pay you? And he said, you can do it on a credit card. <gasps> really? You think you would give it? You should and give it to He's got free. a. He was got a company. He takes credit cards, so you know. So oh, I have my little that. photo business, and I have that <laughs> little square. Oh, yeah. He'll send you a 1099 yeah. too. <laughs> no, it's under six hundred. Well, I have to, uh, well, I'm not sending you my credit card. I'll give you the information, no, and you can tap it, it in. Exactly. <laughs> give me the information. I type it into the. How do I know you're a secure website? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you get a thousand dollar bill. Yeah, I have to. I have to put a couple of things on this jump drive that are that are on the desktop of that yeah. before I uh, 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 kill what's in it. Yeah, okay. and then just re redo the whole thing, put in the new, yeah. just redo, uh, reset it back yeah, to factory default, yeah. and then it should wipe out everything that's there, like <clears throat> passwords and so on. But leave all the porn on it, please. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, like I said, I don't have any porn on it. I don't put anything on the hard drive. It's all on the Dobro. Well, there, wait uh, a minute. It, it, this thing doesn't have a hard drive, does it? It's all sure flash. Does. Yeah, it does. It's, no, it's got a gig. Uh, it's, a, it's a hybrid drive. It's a high, Oh, I see. It's like an SSD and a hard drive. All in uh, one. Yeah. Yeah, good. Pretty fast, I would imagine, when you're signing, starting it up. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, so, you know, I mean, the, you know, we, 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 lately we've been facing these moral uh, conundrums. Uh, and it's interesting that Hollywood has, has, uh, has a conundrum, too. Um, these Ryan kids. Seacrest. Well, these. No, oh, yeah. no, no we'll, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. All right. But right now, the thing is that Would what what's terrible, uh, and what's a, 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 a what's good rather is the are these students, and these students have become a guiding force in this country for this movement to do something about guns, and it's being it's they're very effective, mainly because you see a kid who was shot at who then is in Washington D.C holding up a placard, and you're going to respond to that. What they're worried about is that Hollywood would become involved. And Hollywood has become involved, but quietly, because they realize the same thing. Let it be the kids' crusade, okay? Uh, supposedly, George Clooney has dumped a lot of money at them to help them out so they can go anywhere they want to go and get things done. But he's not making it public and a guy who he uh, who who has been experienced at holding um uh, uh, what he called fund drives for instance for various things like the manchester he did the thing over there to take care of those victims and he's done stuff here in this country for like the las vegas victims he is involving himself but quietly and saying we don't want anybody to know that we're in back of this whole that we're we're backing them. We want them to do it, but we're going to give them the muscle they need. <clears throat> and I, uh, so I'm just glad that Hollywood isn't suddenly jumping in and, and, and overtly doing something, but rather attempting to do it quietly. Maybe George yeah. Soros is making the signs like he did at the Trump um, program. 
uh, during the uh, primaries. Yeah, yeah. Um, not one of my favorite people, by the way. Uh, so. We're mine. No, but, you know, you write me things about Sh Chuck Schumer, and I'm going, so why are you writing me about Chuck Schumer? You know I don't like him. Yeah, that's why I sent you the picture of the hip with the, the nine gun, uh, you know, shooting it, and the fact that he has a concealed weapons permit but doesn't want anyone else to have one. Oh, he does? Yeah. Well, I'm sure if he that? if he knew that everybody couldn't get a concealed weapon permit, he'd give his up in a second, though. He's in New York. Nobody can get a concealed weapons permit. Can't even own a gun. He happens to be a a, a senator, a uh, controversial senator, somewhat, uh, and uh, I would see I would see why he would be doing it for protection. You know. Is that right? Yeah. You know, I but would understand it. I would. I would never personally. I would personally. I would never do it myself. Why should these protections be afforded to every man and woman? Well, they want to get rid of man in in uh, in speak. That's another thing. Did you uh, read that article that uh, now the the movement is to get rid of the word man in mankind and and, and, well, and I, so forth? Well, I you know why why not? <laughs> well, because we we say man as almost like a species in a way, right? We say well, man did this or mankind, uh, you know, mankind, yeah. It's I don't think it's meant as. Well, they don't meet, yeah, I don't think it's meant as. Uh, well, I know what we know what it why it's meant, and it, it it's an overall term that women do come under the category of mankind. Right. Yeah. But that some people might be bothered by the fact that that term exists, and would there be a better term? Person uh, kind is a little. Not it's that's, it's getting too. Politic. It's like I'm always wondering. I'm, I'm waiting for the thing to come up where you know everybody says guys. You know, what about it, guys? And, and it's full of women. I'm just waiting for that one. Yeah. Room yeah. full of women. Come on, guys. How you guys yeah. doing? Do that. You know, it's 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 gotten to that point. Oh, oh, would it be improper to say what up, bitches? <laughs> yeah, you know. Not in my street. <laughs> you know, Guthrie and Savannah Guthrie and Hoda. Come on, guys, let's go. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And Al Roker standing there going. <laughs> Tucking his dick between his legs. Didn't he get his tummy tucked, by the way? Because he is he looking. Knee, uh, he got the uh, where they tie the staple. Uh, yes, that years ago, yeah. Yeah. And he he's pretty much kept the weight on. Scott yeah. writes here, Phil seems a little insecure with his manhood. <laughs> hey, and, and, uh, as of March 19th, he'll be right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, um, uh, Phil's going to go get a his prostate removed. Uh, I, 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 maybe his whole politics will change. Imagine he comes out of well. I don't really give that. I don't really politics. get. I really don't give a shit about guns anymore. No, that's only if we I'm take your. Old. No, that's no. only if we take your balls. If we take your take your prostate, yeah. that's not going to do anything. You know. Hello, Ray Renati. Hey Alex, how are you this evening? By the way, your uh, dog, good. your Tired. dog, your dog last night. Uh, we had people showing their dogs. <laughs> you weren't here, were you, Tony? No, I missed the last. Everybody, we, we were letting everybody show their dogs, and of course, Phil has a dog, and Kevin yeah. has a dog. You have a dog, don't you, Kevin? Uh, I don't think it's it's no, it wasn't it's Kevin. Uh, Ray, uh, um, um, uh, oh, what's his Bob name? Bob Ebert. Bob e e E E E birth, not E birth. Bob Ebert uh, uh, had a had a cute dog, and but Ray's looked like the dog was out of a cartoon, like he was yeah. drawn by Disney. What what kind of it, dog was that? It's a, it's a Labradoodle. Oh, oh, it's a oh, it's a, it's a mixture. That's cool. Yeah, but it's it it was bred from the late seventies wow. by a long line of Labradoodles in Australia. It's only like. 30 pounds. Well, that's cool. That's it has funny. that hair in front of its eyes, so how does it see? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Same way as it sees, hit. though, because I throw, when I throw the ball, she finds it, so. Yeah, 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 that's yeah. good. That's good. Yeah, I throw the ball to mine, and uh, she finds it, but won't bring it back. Did oh, you, did, but so. My, mine will do it all day long. Yeah. I think it's the Labrador part. Yeah. 
You know, I, I would like her to bring it back. <laughs> <laughs> Some dogs will not bring it back. It yeah. depends on the breed, I think. Uh, well, I had a I had a cat that used to fetch. Oh yeah. <laughs> I, too. Really? I would throw I would throw yep. I'd throw a tinfoil ball and the cat would go after it and then bring it back and drop it at my feet and I'd throw yes. it again. And I thought that was very smart of the cat, and then I found out it's considered obsessive compulsive behavior on the part of a cat. <laughs> Yeah. So, you know, uh, and and uh, then all of a sudden you wouldn't the cat wouldn't bring it back, and I you know then I, if later on kit cat would come along and hey are you gonna throw something and so I go to the kitchen and get some tin foil make a little ball and throw it and we back back. Were well, you too cheap to get her a toy? Well, no, but one day we were cleaning up the apartment uh, in New York, in New York City, which uh, was kind of weird because that place was really filthy. And uh, we pulled out the uh, uh, the couch, and what was in back of the couch? But hundreds of foil balls. <laughs> My mother would have went crazy. <laughs> hundreds of foil balls that this cat had been collecting. Squirrel. Yeah. My kid, my dog does that with socks. She's obsessed with socks. If she sees a sock on the floor, she takes it. Really? I had uh, and, two miniature schnauzers growing up, and they like socks. Yeah. I ne uh, the whole time I never had two socks, socks. that matched. Yeah, that's. <laughs> I buy only black socks and the same kind, the same kind, the same size. So if they don't match, they match. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I wear basically just white socks all the time. You know, I just, I, of course, if I'm going out, I wear black socks. You know, get dressing up. You know. And white patent leather belt and uh, plaid pants. But Letterman did that. <laughs> Letterman wears suits on the show, and he wears loafers with white socks. Yeah, he's done that yeah. for years with the white socks. Yeah. yeah. And he used to have that double-breasted suit, and he would never button it. It was always hanging open. Well, I had a double-breasted double suit, and I love to leave it open. It's nice yeah. to let it hang. It's just weird. Yeah. It's it just weird. looks nice weird to... on television. Well, yeah. So, well, I uh, in my case, I always looked weird on television. So, <laughs> what was that show that you used to do that was on, on KQED? On KQED. Uh, oh, the, the oh, Comedy show. Tonight. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. That was good. Yeah, that was I on PBS show. across the whole country. Ah, uh, cool. You know, back and I got to tell you that the year had to be maybe nineteen. Wow, when was it? I when did I leave here and when I. When, Okay, I I left here in 1979, maybe went to San Francisco, and then in about 83 or 84, I did uh, 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 HBO's One Night Stand as the announcer. Okay, uh, and um, I just looked at my residuals from AFTRA and. A couple of days ago, I got a check from HBO for a Bill Maher special I did in like 1985. I'm still getting <laughs> money for those one night stands that they put them on their HBO Go site, uh, where they have a whole bunch of uh, uh, old comedy shows of theirs. If my one night stands on there, I'll get a check for it. <laughs> you know, wow. It was over twenty dollars? Huh? No, it was uh, seventy nine bucks. Not bad. It's not bad. It's yeah. a gift that keeps on giving. And for years with the Comedy Tonight's, which I only got paid 150 a show because it was PBS, they kept sending me residuals over the years that amounted to thousands. So, you know, I, I really would like to have gotten into that residual business more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they re-ran those a lot. Yeah. Th those Comedy Tonight. Yeah. And they every now and then they talk about rerunning them or dredging them up because the the reason for it is is that there are a lot of people who were young at that point and it's kind of interesting to see them performing, you know. Right. Oh, uh, you want to plug uh, Larry Brown is having a show at the Throckmorton Saturday. I, oh yes. I, we we already yeah. plugged it. Oh, when uh, he was on had, when he was on. Larry on today. No, I had him on la yesterday. And he talked oh, okay. about the fact that it's his 37th anniversary in comedy. Right. So he's going to be at the Throckmorton. I said, Are you going to go, I, Phil? Uh, I, I'm not sure. I might. Uh, Saturday's not, traffic's not bad. It was Friday. I oh, no, I can't go. I don't know. Never mind. I can't. Yeah, I might go. Uh, 
uh, Where's it at, Phil? Uh, the Throckmorton Theater. I think it's uh, 142 Throckmorton. It's right downtown Mill Valley. Yeah. Oh, so, okay. Uh, so, uh, well, it's, let's, it's, uh, everybody who's listening to us right now, let's all head over there, okay? <laughs> uh, we just lost, like we lost, 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 lost Jeff. Yeah, you know, if I go, the only thing about the Throckmorton is they make, if I take pictures, I have to take it from the soundboard, and that's up in the, uh, in the balcony. So don't and take pictures, just go and enjoy the show. I don't enjoy shows. I like taking pictures. <laughs> yeah, but you see, the thing is, if, if if you can't if you can't get into a position where you can take a good picture, then it's not worth doing. Yeah, right. you know. Uh, but anyway, well, uh, anyway, uh, let's get on to other stuff here. Um, so we were talking about uh, Ray before you got on about the Dick yeah. Sporting Goods decision. Yeah, I was listening. Which we think is a, is a very good decision. Uh, yeah. But we were we were you know asking about just all these other people that do you, do you suddenly you know say I'm not going to buy another Apple TV because they have the NRA channel on Apple TV, but they also have it on Roku. They also have it on the Fire Stick with Amazon. They also have it on whatever Google's <coughs> thing is as well. So I mean. How, you know, I think to write them a letter and say you're upset that it's there is there's nothing wrong with that. But um, there's some GabNet listeners that say that they're not going to buy a Roku because Phil's on GabNet. Yes, I've heard that. <laughs> I've heard that. They've written and they've protested. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, Rob wrote them and took time out of his busy life to do something about it. And I think that people... Uh, no matter how you feel, if you feel that it's wrong of these companies to run the NRA channel, while I don't think I morally can bring myself to write a letter protesting that particular thing, um, uh, it, but if you're if you're bothered by it, write them and let them know, you know, uh, and, and let them know how you feel about it. Uh, well, I was bothered by the fact that these uh, companies. Did that to the NRA? No, no but you see, they, they're they're I in a, that's a that's and a became a life member. Yeah, that, that's a different position, of Phil. You know, yeah. because when uh, all what all that those people are saying is, you used to get a discount from us. You're not going to get it anymore because we don't want to encourage what we consider your bad behavior. It's not just the discount; it's the va the vanity uh, uh, the vanity uh, uh, credit cards. Well, the I vanity credit the, the the credit card company that has it put it puts out NRA credit cards is going to stop NRA is going to stop doing it. Uh, from the credit card purchases, uh, you know, there's a possibility that they got a kickback from the credit card. Uh, people, sure. Uh, I don't know how that thing works. Yeah, sure, they do. anybody they here know the NRA logo? Yeah, they that. do, and then and then every time you present that credit card, it tells them something. You know, it tells no, somebody like something. United one gives me miles. My American, uh, my uh, American Airlines one gives me miles. It I probably gives you points. Some of them give you points. Tony wanted to say something. He had his. Oh, you know what I was going to say. When I went to visit Shecky Saturday, I was, we were talking about this, and I wanted to email Amazon. I didn't get around to it yet because I was kind of annoyed by it, really, the NRA thing. Well, you know, I, I was kind of hoping. You know, I, I mean, I would still be a problem. You know, I don't know. Does, just, uh, does Amazon sell guns? I don't know. Let me, I'm um, on it right now. You want me to take a look? Take a look. I don't I, think they I can. can. You right can't now. sell guns on the Internet like that. You can't. Uh, so. You can get it delivered to somebody with an FFL license. And uh, they go through the waiting period and so forth. Let me see. But, but it'd be interesting. Yeah, it's like buying it for Bass Pro See, that, Shop, that, so. that I, would, I would complain about. I would say, don't you think that you would be helping America by not selling guns? Because, you know, they do vet everybody who wants to sell on Amazon, although there's been some question as to whether they vet them enough because uh, – there was something the other day. Oh, they do sell guns. About, they do. Oh, my God. Look at this. This is yeah. crazy. Really? Yeah, because you can you can buy oh, them. Then, gun. What is they're it? all air rifles, though. These are air things. Oh, they're air, they're air rifles. The air rifles that look like uh, military weapons. Uh, one of them is taking them off. Uh, it's either Dicks, Dicks. Or, uh, or or Walmart's removing the uh, those air guns that. Uh, oh, that's right. Walmart is doing that. They're getting rid of all toys that resemble uh, those um, assault rifles. Must be a toy. They're like eighteen bucks. 
Wow. They, they shoot pellets, these right? Cool. Yeah. yeah I, used to have, I used to have one of these. Some of these are strong. I'm glad I bought my bug assault gun <laughs> from Bass Pro. Oh, my God. One of them, it tells you how many you sold. One of these guns, Alex, they sold 2,124 sold already for 10 bucks. That's not real. I yeah. know, but I mean, who wants to buy these? Well, pellet guns. They're pellet yeah. guns. There's a, a big dollars? difference. Ten dollars, yeah, forty dollars. What are you doing? With so they stuff? don't sell regular guns. No. Okay. So pellets. we've we, we've answered that question. Okay. okay. Like BB guns. Uh, you know, yeah, pellet guns. Yeah. You know, what are you gonna do? You're gonna put your eye out with that. You know, it's yeah, about. I don't know what you're doing it. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, you just do like target shooting in your backyard with cans and stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I bought a I bought a gun that you put table salt in and you can shoot flies with it. I saw <laughs> that. Does it work? Oh, it works great. <laughs> yeah, I saw that on TV or 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 some ad somewhere. Yeah, it's called bug assault. <laughs> so so I, uh, yeah. So let me let me ask you. So anyway, this who's this woman that quit uh, the White House today? Um, um, uh, the real hot one. Um, oh yeah, the Hope? X model. Hope, yeah. Um, what's oh yeah, Hope. Hope. Yeah. Hope. Hope. Uh, yeah. Hope has no hope anymore. Hope. 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 She's hot, man. Oh, she is. Oh, yeah. No, I. I. Uh, I. Hope Hicks. Hope Hicks. Hope. 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 Nobody, nobody has okay. been able to uh, to keep that job. Scaramucci. No, all, no, no. All no. She people. didn't. No, no, no. Scaramucci was going to take over the press secretary job. Well, that she was the no. Sub uh, she, she, was she was director. She was the communications director. There's a big difference. Well, uh, yeah. They, they've if, got believe me, if Hope Hicks were doing those press conferences, we would just sit there in awe and listen to her. Yeah. Because <laughs> you would be we sitting there because the volume off. Thank you. Can we have a little more? <laughs> with, yeah, with the volume Buy off. Buy all you want. You know. Uh, I think what happened with her is fear. She spent eight hours yesterday in testimony. She yeah. didn't really want this. She signed on to do like PR for Ivanka's uh, clothing line. And yeah. Trump said, what do you know about politics? She said nothing. And he said, you're going to be my communications director. And I think she must have realized, you know what? I'm not going to go down with this ship and I'm not going to be personally responsible. I see everybody around here getting attorneys. I don't need this crap. See ya. I think that's, that's probably what happened. happened. I think she bailed. I heard, yeah. I, she and she talk. supposedly, she supposedly was the most loyal Trump person there. She had been there since before he decided to become president. Right. Okay. Friends her, her, so she was a little girl and, and, and modeled her in his, uh, <laughs> in his no, image. And she's been very, very, very loyal to him without hair. being, without seeming yeah. to be like a toady. Now her big problem was this guy, Rob, what's his name, who beat her up boyfriend? his, beat up his wife. Uh, well, everybody says they were, uh, they were romantically linked. Yeah, and and I said, her. you he know, the problem guy. is, she the problem is that on national television, they can't just say, she was fucking Rob, you know. As the White House turns. Yeah. yeah. Well, how about Seacrest? Uh, well, wait a minute. Let's you know. not, Seacrest. We can get to Seacrest in a second. Uh, but it, it, you know, um, this whole pic. She, she here's a bunch of guys. What do we come up with? Boy, she's hot. <laughs> That's now, about it. And, and what I said, I, I tell you, I, we, uh, 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 Albert and I went to the Republican convention when it was here in New York because, well, we, we were able to get in because I was the press and he was the press. And we got in uh, to watch it, and we went and we walk on the floor, the main floor. And I'm saying to him, look at that woman over there. He says, yeah, but look at that one over there. And we're both, I'm saying... We're two right left wing guys here lusting after these fucking conservative well, women. You could, but well, they well, I don't know, but there was something that they had some they had sexier women than I saw at the Democratic convention. I'm sorry. Maybe you can be in that new movie that on Weinstein. Uh, isn't there a, a, a Weinstein movie when he was young? The making of uh, of Weinstein and, and, and what and what he's done. Uh, I understand that, that that's coming out shortly. No. Uh, no, no, yeah, no. I hear, I hear that. What's his name? Uh, 
who's the uh, who's the Broadway sh writer, the playwright, is Tony, writing uh, a play based on Weinstein. Is that yeah. Tom Kushner? Oh, no, I thought no. it was a movie. Uh, no, no. How, how about the uh, NRA lady there, Elvira, whatever her name is? <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> Mistress of the like, Night? She looks like Elvira. <laughs> <laughs> She looks like she's dead. Like, yeah, burn you with your eyes too. Yeah. Like she was on like Elvira. Life. Elvira, she had a you know. <laughs> this woman looks like she's on True Blood. What was her uh, uh, oh Elvira's God. real name was Cassandra something or another. I'm trying to remember her last name. <clears throat> she was actually a comedian who started doing that as a bit, uh, and then it turned into a profession, and then it turned into not being a profession. So you know. Whatever. Um, okay, you wanted to talk about Ryan Seacrest. Ryan what about Ryan Seacrest? Is he going to lose oh, his job? Oh, now that I said it, Phil isn't out. saying anything. No, no. okay. Right. What about Ryan Seacrest? Because all night long here's you're going, what about uh, Ryan Seacrest? What about, oh, well, what about okay. Ryan Seacrest? He, here's a guy yeah. that's got so many shows that he's doing, yeah. and he's so powerful in Hollywood, yeah. and now... They're coming out against him, but he isn't a bad-looking guy. He doesn't look like a monster, uh, you know. So all he said to was, "Begin with I it's it's work. it's only one woman, okay? All uh, the other people that have worked uh, with him yeah. said this." And th she, she says he grabbed her by the pussy, uh, and uh, and you know all the things that Trump was accused of. Yeah, but wait and, a minute. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. To begin with, this was only one woman. Most, uh, uh, I think, all the women who work with him have kind of come forward and said, no, actually, he's a very decent guy, and he's been very decent to me, and, uh, you know. Uh, so, uh, and Seacrest is saying this woman tried to tried to hold him up for like $15 million or something like that, or wanted money, uh, and she, of course, denies it. But, uh, you know, there's a lot of question about Ryan Seacrest's guilt in this matter because it's only one woman. It's not like this whole bunch of people who jumped in and suddenly said, oh, yeah, he fucked me and he fucked me. And, you know, before you know it, he's Bill Cosby. Yeah. So now, now the big question they're asking is Sunday night is the Oscars, which I oh, do want to bring up here. Cause this Sunday? Yes, this <clears> Sunday. It happens open once open. a year, Tony. Not going to get snacks for Sunday. I like that. You like the Oscars? Uh, I do. You would. Uh, anyway, uh, uh, he does the red carpet. Oh. And he says they're standing by him because they found nothing in their, in their investigations that would make them suspicious of him as being a predator or anything else. So now you're going to have this guy on the, the, the red carpet interviewing Hollywood stars. And the question is, are they going to avoid him? They said there's a group that's going to avoid him. Uh, I don't remember what group it is, but they said that there's going to be a certain amount of group that's going to steer around him. So I don't remember what group it is, though. Yeah, well, I, a lot, <laughs> I, I saw an interview. Uh, Howard Stern did an interview with Jennifer Lawrence in the last day or so that I saw. Yeah, today, yeah. And... Uh, he asked her what she would do, and she said, well, you know, he really isn't guilty of anything. You know, this is all accusations, and so I don't know what I'll do when I'm approached by him, but I, 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 it seemed as though her feeling was, you know, probably I should do, you know, I should talk to him. What uh, about his uh, Kelly Ripa show? Is, it, is that being affected? Uh, n not so far. You know, I, I would hate to see him go down for one woman complaining, you know. Uh, the woman was worked with him as a makeup woman, I think, at E for something like six years, six years, seven years, something like that. Yeah. Uh, you know, if, if this was really a terrible, terrible situation, why was she there that long? Why did she hang out? Why did she stick around? And so but how many I, others? I mean, look at it. How many others have been in the same situation that aren't that are gone? Yeah, not one, not for one, not for one. How many? I mean, I don't know. Yeah, I, thought... I, I think that if if she if she brings <laughs> charges and he's found guilty, then whatever. But one person, I think you need to have you need to have legal action. If you've got ten women, 
coming out, then it's a different story. You can, it's easy enough to corroborate, right? Yeah. But well, one, I, there's nothing to indicate. Have there been oh. have there been any that have gone down with just one? Mm, that's, what I, that's what I'm asking. I don't, uh, I don't, I, well, Dustin uh, Hoffman. What's his name? Uh, the comedian. Um, uh, Louis C.K. Louis C.K. went down C. K. on the K. testimony of I think three women, two women who were all in the same room at the same time. Okay, um, that what was about Dustin Hoffman. Dustin Hoffman, you know, he because there's been so many, and then some of them just disappear like that. Maybe just because they want to get out of it. Well, I mean, I, I don't remember. You have to you have to look at them in in separate. Instances in the case of a Dustin Hoffman, he's what he's my age, all yeah. right. So he's accused of this stuff, and is that going to hurt his career? Well, his career is pretty much at the end now. Anyway, it's time for retirement, and so fuck you. I'll I'll leave the stage, all yeah. right. His residuals. But if you're think, if you're somebody like Louis C.K. who's younger, that's ruined his career. Yeah, you know. I think part of it is that there's a, where there's smoke, there's fire. In that there's a lot of undercurrent, typically with these people. It's like everybody knows about it, but nobody says anything. Right. Uh, you know, so it may be different in Ryan Seacrest's case. If if there's only one person, maybe it did happen. Maybe he had a crush on her back in this is a long time ago when he was. And he kept they kept talking about that crush to her. Yeah. So, and, you know, it very well might be that, you know, he was very early in his career and he did this. Maybe, uh, you know, uh, does that mean he should lose his career for just one? Well, at, like le that? at least it gets no. the onus off of him from the suspicions we've had all these years that he was gay. Uh, yeah. uh, Tony. <laughs> yeah. Yes, Tony. Yeah, I I have to uh, sign off because I have to help my mother to the bathroom where she's trying to. I'm upstairs, so she's calling me. You have here. to help your mother to the she bathroom? She has a walker, so sometimes she can't see that because I open the door. Give her one of those potty things. That she no, has. i got to get into the bathroom. She can get to the bathroom, but I just stand behind it just in case. You know something? This is the kind of guy you hear about. It's true. With though. his what mother. Is, he's like Norman. He's, he's like just, fucking Norman Bates. He you know, Xanax and he goes looking for a school. Next thing you know, ne yeah. Next thing you know, he's going to be doing some weird things with animals and things like no, that. And, and no, no, yeah. no, I mean she can do it. I just make sure that she I got to go up and help my mother get to well, the I'm bathroom. I'm upstairs actually right now, Alex. This is I'm upstairs. I'm in the I'm in the front. You know that lizard right? Are you into taxidermy? <laughs> 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 yeah, she can get them. But I got to make sure that she gets now. Well, you, you better hurry up so she doesn't pee on the floor. I know you live in a hotel. No, it's actually a two thing. Giving you a hard time, Tony. I think it's. A, I think I you're know. a good guy, man. All right, I'll talk to you tomorrow night. I, I, I think. I think. Right. I think it's Tony. wonderful of you, Tony. Okay. Oh boy, that's amazing. Okay, let me uh, get rid yeah. of this. Let me see here. I want to change the uh, get rid of that cabinet live because we're losing him. And that's going to change the whole thing. Remove this person from the group. There we go. Okay. Now would it? Uh, could I put that? Could I put our logo back up again? Oh, I could. Oh, okay. I'll do it. All right. There we go. Anyway, um, the, the you know the whole the, this whole thing has. Do you think it's kind of getting? Like by the time it got to Ryan Seacrest now and, and this whole thing with Ryan Seacrest, that the whole Me Too thing is kind of softening and that it's not affecting him like it would have affected him if, let's say, he were the third person after Weinstein. This well, Me I, Too thing could have, been, uh, could have been influenced by the Russian trolls. And, you know, <laughs> and they, they may have made it up. Y yes. Right. I think, uh, you know, for one accusation, there's a hell of a lot of news stories. I mean, he's got a lot of heat coming down on him right now. Well, because uh, is, is, there, he 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 is he's the one of the moment. I think yeah. he, I think he'll survive it. Uh, American Idol has I saw an ad today. He's on American Idol starting this week yeah. um, or next week or whatever. Uh, and they don't seem to have decided to get rid of him. I think everybody's sticking by him because I think the, the preponderance of the evidence is this is one case and it may not be true. Does he own yeah. okay. that show or part of it? What? No. 
American Idol? Does he own part of that show? No, no. It's Fremantle, I think. Oh. Yeah. I think, uh, again, I think a lot of it has to do with people who, I don't, I, I don't think there's a big secret about all these people that are doing this, but as it comes out, people, you know, there's a lot of murmuring going on with certain people, and Seacrest may not be one of them. And I just think that people want to, you know, all right, one person, if another one comes out, okay. You know. He's got a lot of backers. Yeah, uh, but it doesn't, it, it, wouldn't you have thought that by now, because this happened a while ago, and, and now this woman has brought it up again because we're getting close to the Oscars, okay? And, and, and his show, and, and uh, American yeah, Idol. Yeah, and American Idol. She decided to bring it up again, and that's why it's hit the news again. But nobody else, the first time she said it, you would have thought that if there were other people, you would have heard about a whole slew of women saying, oh, yeah, and I work with him and he goosed me and, you know, he touched my breast or whatever. No, e. this is the only one. Uh, e. Clear, they did an investigation. And they, they cleared, cleared him. him. Yeah. And uh, and she's saying that they uh, they covered it up in his favor and uh, and so forth. But she's also saying that uh, she Listen, made some reports uh, yeah. uh, about this uh, either to other people uh, uh, during the time that it was happening. He may have so, look, uh, with this woman. He may have become amorous <clears throat> towards her. I mean, a woman's working on your face every day. Don't you think you're going to get a little amorous towards her if she's good looking? You know, and then you just grab her pussy. <laughs> I mean, you, you ever been in a makeup chair and, and gotten hot for I the have woman? The pussies right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like, ah, Jesus, yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, now there was a senator uh, that uh, that I, a Republican senator who was also a Navy SEAL uh, who supposedly had an affair, and there was some texting or sexting back and forth, and now his uh, his seat's in jeopardy. Uh, uh, his seat's in jeopardy. That's funny. With Alex uh, Trebek? No. Oh, I see what you mean. Sorry. But, yeah, but as far you as, know, uh, I mean, you know, all I'm saying is, is that I think that a lot of people are a little sympathetic towards Seacrest because it just there isn't a preponderance of these claims. In the case of yeah. in the case of uh, Bob Weinstein, oh. or not Bob Weinstein, Harvey Weinstein. Harvey. Uh, how many people are we up to now? 60, oh 65, something like that? Yeah, that's... You know. Uh, didn't they say they were Space. bringing charges against him? Or uh, it, was it either in the they York? Keep, they keep saying they're looking into the bringing up of charges. In England, oh, Kevin Spacey just closed his foundation, by the way. His, uh, for, yeah, they for, closed it. What's that, Save the Children? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was a child's foundation. Yeah. Uh, he's yeah. he closed down uh, uh, his. Uh, I, we That's haven't heard from Spacey in quite a while, and I don't think we're going to. Yeah, we I, think I, he's done. We well, see. He, uh, let me let me throw this at you. You know, I think Spacey is probably, I don't know, an asshole. I just I get the feeling he's an asshole, and I think that when you're an asshole, nobody comes to your defense. Yeah, agree. But if you're a nice guy and you've been decent to people around you and some of these things come out, people come to your defense, you know, and people don't throw you to the wolves. So I think maybe but, Seacrest is an OK guy. Yeah, because nice guys really don't grab women by the pussy or, you know, nice guys don't do that kind of stuff. Yeah, but I could see where he was, for instance, be smitten by this woman. And occasionally, kind of, kind of, kind of came on romantically to her, and right. that that's what she's talking about. Uh, but she's that hot, huh? He's he's better looking as a guy. I than saw she a picture is. of her. She's very good looking. You think so? Yeah. Yes. I will use well, the look, man standard. I would fuck her. Uh, but, uh, the, <laughs> what what about Billy Bush? I mean, what did he? Well, do? He didn't do anything. He didn't, do he didn't do anything. He was just he was just he was, just a, he was on the bus talking to Trump he was with and he was laughing at the things Trump was saying. Yeah, but then again, and I know I know what he was probably in the middle of. Something's going on. Trump is saying some stuff, trying to be funny. You're doing the interview. You've got him as your guest. 
and you're trying to not, you want to keep him happy, mm -hmm. so you laugh at his little jokes. That's yeah. all he ever did that was wrong. He and didn't. He got screwed. That yeah. was bullshit. Yeah. That was just wrong. But that's what happens is you, you're a performer and you get caught in the middle of a firestorm. Mm -hmm. And once the fire starts, you either have to wait for it to burn out on its own or there's just no way to take a hose and put it out. He's you know. banished from a TV show, yeah. listening to that and laughing, and the other guy who said it all is now the president. Yeah, <laughs> the guy. That, that, that's just wrong. And, he, and, and on at least from nine oh other God. women has been accused of grabbing pussy, okay? Yeah. So no Yeah, no, but you're absolutely right. And I saw an interview with, uh, with Billy Bush, and what he's doing now is he's got some, I know he's got some kind of side business he's doing. It has nothing to do with show business. It's Isn't like he's he not... To the Huh? Wasn't he related to the wrong Republicans? He was related to to the president. Yeah, uh, he, yeah, he Bill, cousin, uh, Billy cousin or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, so, but uh, you know, I felt Billy Bush got screwed, and I wasn't a big fan of Billy Bush's, but I felt he got screwed. No, he got I, thrown under the bus. Yeah, <laughs> literally. <laughs> yeah. Hey, uh, you think this is worth going to? April thirtieth, Ronan Farrow. Uh, is going to be uh, doing a. Uh, uh, he's going to speak at the uh, Commonwealth Club. So can you take pictures? Huh? Uh, can no. You take pictures? Well, yeah, I can actually. Well, then, yeah, go. Yeah, then you got to go if you can take pictures. Yeah, and then compare them to pictures of Frank Sinatra and see if you can see the similarity. Well, I'm <clears throat> a picture of him. There's probably a similarity. He certainly doesn't look like. Uh, uh, I don't know. Ronan Farrell bothers me. Mm -hmm. Uh comes it, with a book does anybody <laughs> does anybody agree with me on that i kind of he he bothers me uh and you say well how can, how can he bother you why does he bother you it, it is just something about him that seems as though he's got a point to make he's got a he, there, there's something he's trying to accomplish business wise well he's selling his book yeah and, and he's saying this is the end of diplomacy and the decline of the American influence. Uh, yeah, well, what does Ronan Farrow fucking know? Yeah, that's you true. know he was he was born into privilege. You know, he was a, a mama's boy, and and that makes him a, 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 a an authority. Yeah, investigative journalist. Investigative journalist. Yeah. Right. Remember, remember they hired him because they thought he was going to be just the biggest thing MSNBC ever had, and within about three weeks Probably they had buyer was. they had buyer's remorse. Do you remember that? Uh, he 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 is the biggest thing MSNBC ever had. <laughs> you know, uh, who else do they got on there? They got that one woman. Uh, what the, do you mean? They the got the leather they, pants. They got Brian Brian Williams. They've got uh, what's Never her what's her name. Uh, <laughs> Uh, the uh, the lucky lesbian. What's her name? Yeah, uh, the one with the leather pants. Uh, 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 what the hell's her name? Uh, <laughs> Rachel Maddow. Rachel Maddow. Rachel. Uh, yeah. she, and she she, she actually beats out Fox. Yeah. Yeah. She's she, she's pretty tough. She beats him up good. Yeah. No. She 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 <laughs> she does uh, she does very well for Fox. Ever, I mean Fox uh, for uh, well, MSNBC. Now, because MSNBC. Fox has fired everybody. If they haven't died, they fired them. They got rid of Kelly. Uh, uh, what's her name? They got rid of uh, uh, the, the the leprechaun guy, uh, Bill Bill O'Reilly. O'Reilly. Yeah. <laughs> You know, the they, they got they the got rid of they got rid of anybody who had uh, ratings on that. The you leprechaun know? guy. Yeah. So but, pretty soon well, he looks like a leprechaun. I'm, I'm by the way, really? by the yeah. way, I, oh, okay. uh, and let me can I, uh, 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 you know, beat on my own chest about one of my own gripes. Uh, I had sixty dollars stolen from me by PBS. Mm. Uh, and, oh. and, and you're saying how how Alex did that happen? Well. The other night, I tried to sign on to uh, the, um, uh, what do you call it, on to the uh, Channel 13 channel here. Wait a minute. Oh, hey, hey, hey. Uh, Bree? Yes, hi, Alex. Yeah, yeah turn, there's some talking going on in the background. It was. Yes, I'm at a conference this morning. I'm yeah. at an event. Oh, I see. Okay. Um, but I was able to get to the hotel Wi-Fi, so... You're able to hear me now. Oh, okay, good. Okay. Anyway, uh, no, but what I was going to say is 
that I went to my my PBS channel and it said, well, if you want this, you want that, you have to subscribe. Well, I had already paid them a year ago some money, and so I went in and I resubscribed. Uh, it gave them sixty bucks, and the thing won't turn on. So I'm not getting the service I paid for. Oh, look, he's in a suit. You got to call him. No. <laughs> Turn it sideways. Just turn just turn sideways. Turn your camera <clears throat> sideways, because that way we get the. Uh, like this? Yeah. Well, there we go. See, there we go. Are you in another country? Are you in in Europe? He's in uh, Dubai. He's in Dubai. Oh, Dubai. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Cool. You don't know that, Alex. I don't know that you're in Dubai. Uh, today, you don't know. <laughs> oh, oh wait a minute! You're not there. <laughs> Yeah, I'm in Dubai. Oh, okay. Why? Well, you can't say that? You shouldn't say that? Nobody should know that you're in no, Dubai? No, I'm just saying, because when I go to a conference, I could be anywhere. Next month, I'll be in Greece. The month after that, I'll be in India. The month after that, I'll be in the States. The month after that, I'll be in Malaysia. I hope you will the call month, this program from each of those destinations. <laughs> the timing may not work out. <clears throat> really? Wait a minute. In Greece, now, now, wait a minute. For example. Somebody is calling us named N... Angelita Cadena, but uh, Angelina, I can't put you on because you didn't call. Oh, she sent a contact request. Okay, hold on a second. Let me, let me see here. You finally get a woman calling the show, and you're not going to take her. Uh, you know, I'm always, I'm always questioning the people, Cautious. these these women who who call because I'm thinking, you know, you get a lot of, you know, spam this way. But let's Trolls. see if she answers. Uh, Ooh, a robot. An Angelita. Hello. Huh? Hey, I didn't I, know you'd started I, already. Oh, are you there, Angelita? Yeah, I'm doing good. Can, oh, can, she's real. Can, can you hear me? I sure can. Can't you hear me? Yeah, do you have a camera on your Skype? Oh, let huh? me see if I can get it working. Yeah, just turn it on. And uh, because, um, oh, look, it, we're, we're looking at the buffet in Dubai. Oh, she just hung up. We lost her. Um, uh, 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 what, what is that? Is that is the buffet in Dubai, right? It's for the, the yeah bagels and locks. It it <laughs> is. It's bagels and locks. Just the snack for Is that bagels and locks? Uh, yeah. Really? Oh, okay. Wait a minute. But hold no on. Jews. Hold, hold on a second. I wonder what happened to Angelita. Should I try her again? Yeah. Shall I try her again? Let me add her to the group. Well, I think she's trying to get her camera going. Uh, let me see here. We'll try her again. See if see if she's there. Um, uh, it would be nice because it's a new caller. You know, always like to. Oh well, she's not answering. What kind of robot is that, Bree? What is? You know, I haven't figured it out. Uh, uh, well, apparently, well, it draws well, something. Well, wait a minute. Where are you? Exactly. What kind of conference is this? Well, this one is uh, called Juan Ifra. It's the 13th one here in the Middle East. Uh, and it's just a two-day event. So yesterday was the first day. Yeah. And uh, the main speaker was the Minister for Artificial Intelligence. Oh, I uh, see. For the, um, uh, for, the, uh, for the country. Yeah. And then today they're starting off. They've got a guy here from Singapore who's going to talk about how uh, the newspapers have joined with the radio and the TV to, to increase their digital presence, blah, 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 you mm -hmm. know. And, so, and this is what, and is this food free, by the way? Is it free? Oh, absolutely. Oh. Alex, if I sent you pictures of the lunch, uh, you just wouldn't believe it. It's unbelievable. I overdid it yesterday, so today I've got to be more careful um, is, is it because a, there was it, just too much. Is it a free lunch? Absolutely. There are no free yeah. lunches. Well, there are, <laughs> apparently there are gone. free lunches. I guess in this case, register, there is. You register for the conference, and that's part of the conference. Yeah. Well, I didn't have to pay for that either. So I'm, I know someone in another part of this world who is uh, works for the organizers. Uh, so sometimes I luck out like that. Is that Starbucks? <laughs> no. <laughs> Do they have Just, Starbucks in Dubai? Oh, sure. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, sure. What do you, th but, uh, what do you think Dubai is? Do you think it's just a bunch of camels spitting at people? Come on. 
Yeah. <laughs> I see a bunch of camels over there. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, this is this is this is good stuff here. Uh, look, anybody who puts out a spread like that is not a third world country. Okay, Phil. <laughs> Dubai is you not. Dubai is rich. I, I, I know Dubai is a very nice country. It's uh, it's just it, it's 130 degrees there, and uh, you know. Oh, you wait know, a minute. Overnight a oat. What is overnight oat? Those are oats that were there yesterday. Uh, oh, my I'm wife. Wait, it. my wife makes those. Overnight oats. Yeah. Yeah, you, you just put the you don't even cook it. You put it in the refrigerator like with fruit and stuff, and, and then it's it, and then really it, good. And then it like sits there and bases or something itself. Yeah, or fixes does itself. Yeah, Plus food channel. Yeah, why not? <laughs> you know, all, all all of a sudden well, the numbers you know, went I actually, jumping. I do. I tweet about the food at the conference. That's like my little niche. You know, <laughs> and sometimes I will I will quote from uh, some of the speakers, but. Yeah. yeah. So it'll kick off at nine. I'll just be here for the first hour for the first speaker. Then I have to go back yeah. uh, for a meeting and then I'll be back. Now, are these conferences deadly morning. dull or do you really enjoy them? No, I, I enjoy them. I, otherwise, I wouldn't come. I mean, yeah. Okay. I'm English? always learning something. Uh, are they uh, put on in English or in uh, Arabic? Well, they're both. And then uh, what they do is they have. Uh, these little devices that you hook up to your ears to, uh, if, if the speaker is in exactly. Arabic, then yeah, exactly. I can show you if the Wi-Fi will you work. The uh, same kind you. of they have at the UN. Oh, is that is that the room yeah. where you hold this? They hold the speeches and yes, everything. Yes, this is. It's one of the rooms, and these are the. Uh, that's where we get translation, translation right. earphones. The booth I is see. actually, the booth is in the back. And it's quite common at you know many of these conferences, uh, you know, to have the little translation booth in the back. And well, so, I got to admit, Bree, those chairs look a lot more comfortable than the, the conferences that I go to. <laughs> you know? So what do you do? Yeah. Do you do you dial up your language or something on the on yeah, the earphones? That's correct. That's cool. That's, that's very cool. It's like the UN. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it is. Uh, okay. It's it's definitely cool. You need it because. Um, even though the speaker might be in English, sometimes the questions yeah. that come from the audience will but be But the in most important language. thing is, there's probably really good air conditioning in there. Yeah, you know, today it's a little warm. Yesterday it was freezing, so I don't know if they, you know, mentioned something to them yeah. uh, or not. <clears throat> Can you get the way a, a at my conferences? They make it so cold so you don't fall asleep, but I do anyway. Well, there's the New it's, York Times. Watch out, Tony. I hate those conferences. I hate them. You hate them? Like three times a year, I have to go to those with the big stage, and it's, yeah, it's it, you know, it's all industry crap. There's the conference on the front paper, front page. Oh, really? So it's that big a yeah, con? It's that important a conference? Yes, yes. Wow. Well, usually in other countries, uh, they will have the heads of state. Mm -hmm. Uh, who will appear. When I was in Thailand, I met the uh, Prime Minister of Thailand at the time. Wow. Uh, because he was at the... I had to go out and buy a jacket because I didn't have a jacket. <laughs> and, that, uh, it, which is easy I, to do in Thailand. The, the New York Times that you showed us with that conference on it, uh, I, I would stake my life that the New York Times headline in New York has nothing to do with this particular headline. That, that headline uh, that they, they printed there. Well, wait a minute. What's the news? What, show, fake news. Show, I'll, I'll stake my life too. Show us yeah. the New York Times again. Let's see what the headline is. Go over to the side. See what. Uh, let's see. The world can learn to to say hi, man. Hi, man. What is that? It's a German. Okay. That's what's a German the other headline? For home. Europeans conjure fix to keep Iran deal alive. This looks like. The New York Times European edition. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm. That's what I meant. Yeah, yeah. There, there. Look, international edition. It says right there. Fake hey, news. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Fake international news. Now, right. is, is there yeah. usually about Trump? They, Flip a few pages. No, you got any Trump news? No, I, I have to tell you, um, I was on a panel last week where we were talking about Trump year one, a, a media perspective, and. The, one of the uh, one of the panelists was from Sky News Arabia, a, a Middle Eastern news uh, uh, outfit. Basically, he said, you know, we just don't talk about Trump very much. 
he said, uh, if you do a scan, like th their top 10 mm -hmm. uh, stories of each day, Trump would be around 8 or 9 or 10 if he made it. It's just, oh. not, a, he's just not as big a deal, uh, you know, for the international community. So you can see here, you know, you don't see him on the front page of anything, but you see the, the local leaders are on the front, you know. Wow. So that's the leader of Dubai right there. Yeah. And then that's the leader of uh, Abu Dhabi. Abu Dhabi. Can you say irrelevant? <laughs> well, to us it makes it. Not to, for him. To us it has no relevance. Over there it has a lot of relevance. Yeah. Do you remember Andy Kaufman used to sing I a mean, song called Abu I mean, Dhabi? Trump is irrelevant. Do you remember? What? Do you remember Andy Kaufman used to sing a song was called that, Abu Dhabi? Was that the bongos or yeah, with, with the, the bongos. Abu yeah. Dhabi, Abu Abu Dhabi. Oh yeah. Yeah. The big news here is that uh, there was a Bollywood uh, actress. Oh, yes, she died. died. She was a very big actress, and supposedly oh, yeah. in that part she of the drowned. world. She huh? drowned. Did she drown? In the bathtub. She drowned in the bathtub. Yeah. You mean they're not talking about Ryan hotel. Seacrest? <laughs> <laughs> no. Irrelevant. Seacrest is not on there. Yeah. Wow. Seacrest out. Seacrest <laughs> gone. <laughs> out. Done. Now, Bree, I figured out yeah. that the reason you show no, up for you. in the morning is, is they got the breakfast. And the reason that you leave that is, and correct. come back at noon is because they have the lunch. But, yeah. <laughs> well, this, how, yeah, come, yeah, how, come there's, how come there's nothing going on? Or it, it hasn't started yet? It hasn't started yet. Oh, okay. Because it's what time in Dubai right now? It's got to be 56 a.m. What time? So four, four more minutes, and uh, it's gonna four more minutes. It will get going. And, and what time will that be there? Nine nine o'clock, ten o'clock. Nine a.m. Nine a.m. Okay. Yeah. So we're 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 nine hours. And, you know, we're, we're nine five. hours off of you. Is what we are. Yeah. Well, in New York. Yeah. But, uh, you know, maybe next week, next month, he'll take us on a tour of Greece. That would be nice, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But uh, anyway. So what do you owe all of this travel to? The, this is unusual for you, isn't it, Bree? Yeah, uh, some, it depends. Some years it's uh, more. Some years it's less. It, it depends on a lot of different factors. Yeah. Yeah. So, so the women don't have to cover up there, like in Saudi Arabia. I see women there walking around just with regular. Oh, is he gone? Oh, uh, no. Not if they don't want to. Uh, no, it, no, not if they don't want to. Oh, okay. So, it, 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 clothing is optional. It's up to them. So you're <laughs> at the Weston. <laughs> the clothing optional. Yeah, uh, you're, you're at the Weston. What hotel are you at for that? Are you, That's correct. I think uh, we're, the Weston. The Weston, uh, yeah, we're yeah. losing him a little bit because he probably goes into certain areas where the. Can you show us what that thing's writing? Yeah, what does you that? Know, right now, it's not writing anything because I don't think the people are here. Yesterday, it did an image of the <clears throat> former leader of the country. Uh, oh, really? <clears throat> Excuse me. So yeah, yeah. Oh. <clears throat> so I think they have to get here to do that. I see. Uh, oh, so there's a company over here. <clears throat> what? I think he, I think he, he froze on us finally. I think the Wi-Fi is. Uh, it, you know, it, there we go. There we, now you're you're okay. Now we're getting you. Well, anyway, listen. Uh, I I'm. You hear that? There goes the theme song already. Oh hi, how are you? How? Well, that's. How are you? Hi. Oh look, a guest. Nice to have a woman on our show. Uh, <laughs> anyway, even uh, uh, you're back. Yeah. Media. yeah, they do newspapers on demand. Yeah. Oh, really? Oh. Okay. Hey, listen, I gotta go here. Uh, 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 thanks to uh, first of all, uh, Phil Meyer. Uh, thanks to Jeff Stein. Jeff's been a little quiet tonight. That's Ray, true. Ray Renati. That's fine. I just like seeing your face. Yeah. Uh, Rob <laughs> Alfano. Glad to see you here. Always a pleasure. Kevin, always a pleasure with you. And, of course, Bree always takes us off to another yes, country, thanks, which makes Alex. us feel really Rob, good. Sorry, I came in late. Yeah. Everybody, I'll call up that in eight you got two seconds here. after? Yeah. Everybody, uh, give a big round of, 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 of waving, <laughs> not applause, waving to the people out there. Okay? That's our citizens panel for tonight. And uh, uh, they'll be here hopefully again tomorrow night, uh, uh, same time, uh, on uh, the uh, ramble, uh, which is uh, our little program, as you can, 
as you as you notice. Uh, hold on a second. I just got to take care of some stuff here. Listen, uh, why don't you stick around because R- R- Rob and uh, Rob, Jack and Amy are next over most of this same GabNet station, and then at uh, midnight. Uh, uh, what a, can I try this again? At one o'clock. Eastern Time, it'll be the connections. I'll see you tomorrow night, right after Damien's show. Damien Chaplin with The Exchange. He's on at 9.30 uh, with uh, The Ramble. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Okay.